Tim, since we have a quorum, I'd like to uh, uh, review the minutes, please. Looking for a motion to approve minutes as presented. I make a motion to approve. Oh, Mark, hang yeah. on a second. We got to start over. I got to record. Oh, it is recorded. No, it, it's being recorded okay. now. All right. Very good. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I heard a motion and a second. Um, <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So passed <laughs> unanimously. Thank you. Okay, Tim, take us away. All right. Well, I just uh, for the committee's edification, uh, since we've last met, um, it has been very busy. I think the uh, the group would agree. We, we've um, uh, I think met probably a half a dozen times, um, speaking about specific channels, uh, going through each each of the objectives for the channels, um, each of the people that are in charge of the different channels, namely again Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, our email initiative and website. So this. There's five um, elements, if you will. Um, I, I have received justification statements per my request from most of them, but not all. So those of you who owe me something, um, you know who you know you owe it to me. Um, and John, I'm not sure what the technical issue was, but I'm glad I got back to you saying I got one page because it it kind of left off at the end of one, and I said I know there's more to it, but yeah. it didn't come through. So um, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll look into sending it over again. Okay. All right, so again, for the committee's justification, what we had uh, done is just talked about having um, something in writing uh, from the respective, uh, we'll call them channel captains, I guess, just justifying why it is uh, this team feels that Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera, are the proper methodologies for us to reach an audience. And then within that justification document, tell me or tell us, remind us, who the audience is, um, and uh, to get uh, and and then back it up with with uh, more than just opinion, but with you know some research. So, for example, you know on, on Brenda's piece, she had talked to uh, several communities that were that were uh, using Facebook and why they use Facebook and what they're getting out of it. Um, she had some professional um, sources in there as well that she had uh, illustrated. Um, so, you know, that's the type of thing that I think we want to have in a file that always says these are the objectives, these are the justifications. Being in such a public venue as we are, um, we will be put in a position as a committee to justify these, you know, at some point along the road, maybe never, but at any point we can say, well, here's a justification for why we feel Facebook is uh, something that the town of Wallingford should be using. Um, and again, backed up um, with a little, with a, with a brief bio. I, I asked each of the channel managers also, it's to say it's coming from an individual name doesn't really give it enough beef. So uh, in each of their cases, it's, this is not to keep singling you out, Brenna, but, but to say, you know, my name is Brenna Rose, but here's why I bring credibility to the fact that Facebook should be used as a, uh, as a means to take and reach uh, a town audience and grow a town audience. Um, so uh, each of those statements are, uh, I guess, a, a work in progress. I think, Brenna, you've, we've refined yours to the point where it's good to go. Uh, we have a little bit of work to do on the others, but um, so that was one of the things that we had uh, worked on pretty diligently. Uh, I don't see uh, Professor Tomchik on. Is he not with us yet? Okay, I don't think so. Um, the other thing is that uh, we wanted to take and get um, the first three messaging sessions done. So what are we going to what are we going to say in, in session one? What are we going to say in session two? What are we going to say in session three? So to Anthony's uh, point, we want to have some some backlog of how we want to message uh, and, and get started. Um, so week one, we were going to basically do a, a welcome to Wallingford. It was going to be an introductory type messaging thing, introducing the platform um, and just kind of getting our, getting our feet wet that way. Um, um, it was Sam, I think, came out with, and please uh, correct me, was Sam or Shay winning in Wallingford? It was Shay, right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, so in, in conversations about some of the messaging, you know, we have used as a committee, why Wallingford? And it's on a lot of our documents, it's on our website, why Wallingford, why Wallingford? Well, Shay came out with, how about winning in Wallingford? 
and let's talk about why businesses succeed here. Um, and we liked it as a group, so we need to take and bring that to the committee this morning, Mark, to, to see if we're okay with uh, making that slight adjustment and saying, you know, this is why your business will win with Wallingford and, and uh, our, our messaging would go along those lines. So, um, so week number two, and I, I say week number two, in some cases we're doing these every other week and I'll let the different channel managers to speak in a minute, but we do them every other week. So week two is really like message two, but we would talk about, you know, the winning in Wallingford uh, approach. Um, we, uh, the third message would be innovative partnerships. Um, um, and I'll let the, them explain that as well. Week number four, we start talking about energy. So we're kind of like soft entering the market so we can get our sea legs to make sure we've got some audience development feels uh, to that um, and start to start to take and, and grow an audience, start, um, what's the proper word, but um, cross-pollinating our, our contact lists to make sure that we can grow one list off the other list. Um, and then Callum and, um, and Sam are taking and making sure that all of the things that we're doing are, are driving traffic to the website which is the ultimate goal is to create messaging, drive messaging to the website, which is where our comfort zone is. Once they enter our website, we know that there's, there's you know, a fixed and uh, prepared messages and a uh, means for us to take and measure traffic, measure, you know, uh, lead generation, um, you know, that type of thing. So um, I was hoping David would be here to take and, and uh, expound upon that a little bit, but, um, uh, since he's not, I think what I, so Mark, uh, can we discuss winning in Wallingford uh, for a minute? Yeah, why don't we start with that one? Do you want to give a little, do any of the um, participants want to give a little bit of a background of what the thought about that? Or do you want to just go right to us thinking what, what the initial response to that is? How do you want to do that? Well, Shay is kind of the uh, the idea person behind that. So Shay, you want to Tell us what your thoughts were. Yeah, um, so I it kind of came up while I was making the email marketing, um, just because I saw that you guys had the Y Wallingford. Um, so my initial thought for the Y Wallingford was basically that it was kind of like already in like defense mode, like it was kind of already being like, oh, why would I want to do Wallingford? So it was kind of like a negative way, like not a negative way, but you're just already in defense where we're, where winning in Wallingford is already like positive and you're like it's like more just like attractive I would say to businesses because it's like positive rather than why Wallingford which is kind of like defensive um so that was kind of like the main thing behind it that I think needed to be changed um and then winning in Wallingford also was just like it shows that businesses can win um, small businesses, large businesses, families can win, like the community wins. Um, so it's basically showing like the relationship between the businesses, the community, um, the residents, like anything really you could tie it to. Um, so that was kind of like my main thought behind it because it's like universal, it's, it's positive and it like shows that everybody benefits um and wins in wallingford committee you have any thoughts on it um yeah this is rob um i like it in the sense that i think one of the things that we have because i hadn't really considered the approach that um that shay just mentioned about being on a defensive mode but certainly i think um that it appeals to a larger audience of types of businesses that might want to relocate. Um, I know we've been fo focusing primarily on manufacturing with the electric rates, uh, but I think some of the office space and other um, um, areas that we're trying to address, that might certainly appeal to that group more than necessarily the why Wallingford. I think that the why Wallingford is certainly a question that has to be integrated into the system, into that uh, message, because um, that obviously part of winning in Wallingford, the first question is, well, why would I, that question of why is gonna come up. So we need to, we can't abandon that approach either, but integrated into the uh, winning Wallingford, I think might be a better approach, more comprehensive approach for sure. I, I agree, I like, I like it. 
I like the idea. And, 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 and like you said, it will answer why. <laughs> Anthony, you have a thought? I, uh, uh, apologies, Mark. I had a, um, 8 a.m. huddle and I just came in, so I missed a little bit of that. Okay. Um, my, my, my thought initially, and, and now that I've even heard more from Shay and Rob and, and uh, Patricia getting in on it is, I, I, I think I like the idea. I, I don't see why Wallingford is being the first question. I see the first question being welcome to Wallingford. And in that question of welcome to Wallingford, you start talking about why Wallingford is so good. That, that I think that's really good in the, in the welcome part of it. Winning in Wallingford, I think is good because it reestablishes, it refortifies what we've actually been doing for the last five to six years. And that is Wallingford is a great place because of energy. Wallingford's a great place because of education. Wallingford is a great place because it's centrally located. It, it reinforces the fact that we can win for your business with all of these aspects and more. And we're gonna show you as we continue on, the more aspects that'll be beneficial to your business or you wanting to live in Wallingford. So I, I, Shay, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think what it did was it just took a lot of the fragments that we've been working with over the five or six years that we've been doing it, and it brings it in to one, a winning combination. And I, I, I applaud you for that. Tim, any other thoughts? Sounds like everybody likes it. And Anthony, just to bring you up to speed real quickly. So right now, you know, most of our messaging starts with why Wallingford. And that's about, you know, our website, uh, brochures, et cetera. It's, you know, why Wallingford? And then we go into our bullet points about, you know, the different strengths of the town. And uh, it was it was Shay as, as we were working through some things uh, in between our official uh, marketing committee meetings, in individual channel meetings. Um, she had come up with the idea of saying, you know, winning in Wallingford. It's just more positive. It's more action oriented. Uh, and that's the genesis of that. And you've just heard the other discussion. So, uh um, unless you have any, you have any thoughts on that, Anthony? No, I think that's, uh, I think that's great. It, it shows consistency in the message as it transitions to winning. And I think that, uh, that makes perfect sense. Well, Shay, it sounds unanimous. Mm. Not a bad way to start a week, right? <laughs> yeah. God's a great <laughs> room likes it. So Mark, if, if, um, if I can suggest um, that we can, I want to go through channel by channel, having the respective people talk about, you know, what they've accomplished over the last uh, month and um, talk about their degree of readiness in, in terms of uh, starting, you know, getting launching. And also there, there, we, we feel there needs to be a synergistic message. So whether we're using Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or what have you, that the message in essence is very similar, maybe a different twist or a different format, but it's basically at its core, the same message going out on all platforms. So that there's there's consistency and a level of, of, uh, of control. All of those four channels um, aiming back to the website. So um, I know Callum and Sam have done a fair amount of work on, on redesigning our, our landing page on our website. Um, so I was gonna suggest that maybe since that's where everything is aiming towards, we asked Callum to uh, uh, share his screen and, and go with us, uh, share with us the changes to the website. If you're okay with that, Mark. S sounds like a plan. All right. Okay. Callum, you up? You ready? I'm ready. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, let me just pull it up quickly. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the landing page that we've been working on. Um, so this is with all of the changes that we discussed during our meeting last week with uh, with um, Dave, Tim, myself, and then Samantha. And um, so starting off, the most recent change is the addition of this at a glance statistics at the very top, um, and we've added also this uh block quote at the very beginning um from the quinnipiac chamber of commerce we've adjusted everything all of the call to actions and also the navigation bar on the side to 
uh, reflect the the transition to winning in Wallingford. And so now the title for this landing page is Why Wallingford to reflect more about um, this being used for marketing materials, marketing purposes. Uh, we have several new statistics here, um, which we've been working on and we worked on with Tim to create. And uh, these reflect on a number of different facets. So we're looking to, um, to use to try to tackle different uh, things that people might be worried about or might be looking for. Um, and we also have testimonials from four different esteemed um, business owners or uh, executives from Longford. Uh, we have all of the, the final questions and answers for the FAQ uh, right here and all of the uh, all of the testimonials and then also the FAQ answers that are hidden here because you on the actual website you click to see them um, are also available in the comments on the right. Um, and then lastly, also from the last time that we had spoken, we hadn't had the social media icons in the footer yet. And that's something that's been added since then. Um, and this whole link, I'm actually, after I'm done sharing, I'm actually just gonna put in the chat too. So. If anyone wants to poke around and go through quicker or slower or read the uh, the answers or the testimonials, they can just click the link in the chat and then um, see it for themselves. So, Callum, I'm going to ask that, um, and maybe maybe Sam, this could be your uh, part, but it's very difficult to see that on the screen. I mean, I know I got your email this, earlier this morning, so uh, but obviously I know what we put in, but I wonder if you could go through some of the elements is he went through the mechanics of the site. Um, I also at some point would like you to talk about um, uh, how the other um, social media channels are going to drive traffic to the site and the magic that you are going to do behind the scenes to make that happen. But right now, if we could just talk about the messaging on the site. So what's under the 40%, the 20 minutes, the five hubs, the quotes I find are, are very strong from some great, very significant business leaders. And um, we, we discussed the fact that we could even get more and we can swap those out once in a while. So uh, um, Sam, you want to talk about the content? Yeah, so starting with those top three numbers, um, we wanted to break it down to the mo three most important things that a business would be looking for, starting with um, the electric rates and things that Wallingford can can definitely cater to. So the 40%, um, you said that you had spoken to, I guess, someone who could run some numbers for you. And the number that came out on average was around 40%. So as to not overpromise, we said that relocating and, um, oh, actually, Callum, you might want to take out the word downtown Wallingford because we, we generalized it. So it's relocating to any part of Wallingford can save businesses up to 40% in electric costs. That downtown ah. statistic was um, from a pamphlet that we decided to switch. But um, next would be the 20 minutes. So the next most important thing that we found after talking with everybody and doing interviews was um, access to labor force. So we found that statistic that we could use. And then uh, third being the location for logistics and transportation and um, how we have access to both railways within the center of Wallingford, airports, seaports, and highways. And then the paragraph below that is just kind of general to tie that all in, go over it one more time. Um, and then we have the video, of course. Again, Sam, could you could you read it? Because we can't, unless anybody else can, but no one, I can't, you can't read it on the screen. It's way too small. Yeah, it says, our highly productive and educated labor force, superior quality of life, Sorry, I'm just trying to zoom in so people can read it. Go ahead. Um, Sorry. Strategic graphic business location, uh, a geographic business location, one of the lowest electric rates in New England, and amongst the nation's highest percentage of employment in technology based industries reflect the town's economic strength. Jim, I, I did not have a problem reading it prior to you mentioning that. Um, and it's larger case lettering than than the actual 20 percent 
20 minutes, whatever. I for, I know I'm, it's, it's, um, I've lost it because somebody moved it up. But we either have to move everything up, coordinating it together. Like the, that part with the 20% is smaller. In, uh, 40%, 20, 20 minutes, five hubs is actually smaller in lettering than the our highly productive and educated labor force. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna if you're gonna make the our highly productive bigger, make also the forty percent, twenty percent, five hubs bigger. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah. the actual size on the on the page, this is a static. It's a static image, which it's not a responsive website, and so this is also taking into account a pretty standard amount of padding on both the left and right side, but. Um, if you can imagine also, this would be spanning your entire screen size. So you wouldn't have the comment section on the right hand side. Okay. And so it's actually the same. If you can't read what's on the, I mean, it, it's essentially the same size that would be on the, the website right now. Um, Cause that's where I took the uh, text sizes from. Oh, okay. Um, so if, yeah, if you can't read it, then the, the text on the current website would also need to be updated. Okay. I, I think maybe I was misunderstood. What I'm saying, and for illustration purposes, you, you've got this this static view of the, the the page, but we can't. The committee can't, or at least I can't read it. I don't know, if, but I know it's going to be much larger on the website. I, I think the, the the web version is is fine. I wouldn't. I don't think you need to change font sizes and things. Uh, all Does this help at all? Uh, that that helped a little bit, but I still can't read some of it. But. Uh, mm. Um, it must be on your monitor then, Tim, because I, oh. I can, it's I can read it very well now. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's, you have a thirteen oh, inch. I, yeah. I got it now. I got it now. There you go. Okay. Yeah, you got to. Right. Yeah, I had to enlarge the screen there. Okay. Okay. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. The the only thing that uh, uh, the only comment I had, I thought everything else fit in okay. I just think the part that has winning in Wallingford and everything below it. Um, just you want to make sure that that's precise and large enough where people can look at it and go on to the next thing. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And again, Callum, your, your design has the font sizes and, and, um, and so forth the same as it's presently on the website? Yeah, I actually, I just took all of the, uh, the styling for the text from the website. Okay. So it's not deviating at all. It's just the content and the, the structure that's changed. Okay. Callum, in your expertise, is that font and writing, even though it's still, it's on our website now, appropriate? I mean, is that general? Is it something that is acceptable in the general market? Or would you, as an expert in this, um, suggest something different? Yeah, you know, I think it's actually, I'm pretty sure it's, it's standard. Um, I mean, I can check right now, actually, and, and tell you if that would, um, which might be easier. Um, and I mean, it's, it's all just, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's all pretty standard 16 pixel size font size, which is, is pretty standard. Okay. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I think it's fine. Thank you. And Callum, if I could ask, is this written in WordPress? Is it optimized for um, both a, a PC and a, a tablet and a, and a cell phone? Is the prototype or is the current website? The current website. The current website is optimized for mobile. We we did test that, um, and it, it is not made in WordPress. Though it's, I'm, uh, it it did look like it was made um, either through a. a a code template or it was hard coded. And so it, I don't think it's as easy as, uh, as logging into a WordPress update. So if there were to be, you know, uh, requests for changes that we have to go back to the, to the web host, to the folks who designed it, or is it something that if, if there was a resource available that, you know, small changes, updates and so on and so forth, I'm not sure, Tim, you may know the answer to this, but, um, you know, how, how are changes and updates made? Is there someone in within, the town who's able to uh, to make those uh, you know minor changes and updates and so forth yeah she's retiring <laughs> yeah <laughs> in two weeks uh, lynn, lynn okay. wolf does them uh, anthony okay uh, she has the ability to make text changes uh, only um, okay. um based on you know your your um input today and um hopefully your support um callum and lynn and i have a meeting set up for tomorrow 
to talk about the how to's because some of this is more than changing text. It's, it's, it's Calum is going to have to, you know, work with web solutions who is gotcha. the web hosting something company to make the uh, respective changes. So we want to make sure web solutions obviously is, is quarterbacking the changes because at the end of the day, they're the constant uh, in this mix more so than any of us, I guess. So. <laughs> Yeah, so we're, we're still trying to figure out um, exactly how we're going to go about implementing it. But uh, thank you. Yep. Um, All right, so back to um, uh, just the, the overall makeup and changes. Uh, Calum, can you talk a little bit about search engine optimization? And, and... Sure. So uh, the, the biggest reason for this entire refresh for this page was because this is this is our landing page, and this is the first introduction that site visitors are getting to to the uh, Longford Economic Development Committee, and so it needs to be one of, if not the strongest page. And currently, if you go on the website, you'll see that there's limited, um, at best, content there. And what we discovered when going through the analytics was that. That's actually reflected in the drop-off rate from the amount of people that are clicking onto that page and then leaving the website altogether, which is not a good thing. And so this entire refresh is designed to help keep people on the on the website, but then also optimized to help them click on to other things and to continue in the in the journey and follow up with contacting Tim to look at uh, relocating to Longford. And so um, as far as SEO goes, it also has a lot more content. And so that's gonna help with SEO because naturally Google can index uh, this website and this page specifically for answers to different searches um, because it has content to reflect that. And then also having more links on the website that are tied to um, different copy helps Google understand what those links could be used for. And so it's going to, this whole website is going to help with SEO, but then it's also just, it's going to help with the, uh, the natural user experience and helping with, hopefully with uh, conversion rates too. So, uh, uh, Samantha, I don't know if you want to continue with the content updates. Yeah, I left off at that quote right there. So kind of going off of what he was just saying, uh, we took a quote from the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce so we could also link back to them because once they read this quote, um, people also get a better picture, not just from a business sense, but they talk about the vineyard, the farmland, and it being more of a town for people to live, which we didn't hit on yet. So we thought that was good to add right below the web, uh, the video. And if they decide to click on that link to the Chamber of Commerce, it'll take them to the page on the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, which also um, starts raving about Wallingford. And there's this whole uh, paragraph of content dedicated on their page to, to what um, great things exist in Wallingford for businesses. So that's um, a good thing to link back to. And then next, we um, wanted to hit hey, Sam, on- if I could just jump in for one second. So. Yeah. So uh, the, to the committee members, I'm hoping that you can see a transition from, you know, the business centric discussions that happen on the top of the page with, with the, you know, the, the, the statistics, the numbers, then the video, why, why would you want to move your business to Wallingford? And then right under that is, you know, we start talking about Wallingford's personality and its characteristics. So we're trying to do this like smooth transition from, you know, uh, business stats to Jesus is a, you know, showing Wallingford's personality and that, that uh, brief uh, sentence uh, begins to take and make the, the transition in people's minds to who we are outside of our industrial parks, I guess. Yeah, and it's also, uh, it's social proof. And um, people find that reviews online are actually taken just as, are just as highly regarded as personal recommendations. And so it adds a lot of credibility and makes the content more uh, meaningful to people that are visiting it. Very good. Thanks, Sam. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so next, we just talked more about how the town is in a very central location in the entire Northeast, which is a good thing for a North American expansion. Um, and then that winning in Wallingford link will take them to the 
page that was initially titled Why Wallingford, which kind of talks more about the highway systems, harbor, train, and airport systems that exist and where they are. Um, and then we added some more statistics uh, at a glance. So the first one being the 1,500 acres that are available in Wallingford for industrial and office use. Um, and then the five cities that we have access to in under two hours. And then the total of 2,200 businesses currently locating in Wallingford. And then finally, the 113% being the labor force in Wallingford having a higher productivity rate than the national average. And next we wanted to, so something that Wallingford, um, on, the, on the first landing page, we hadn't really been linking back to some of the pages that might um, entice business owners to pursue contact with uh, the economic department and we thought that the incentive programs would be a good way to do that so we wanted to add that towards the end where we get closer to the call to action and drive people to the incentive program page where they can learn more about how there are some special offers that they might be um, they might be able to negotiate and then I think lastly right before the FAQ we have the third party testimonials. So I spoke to a number of our contacts that some of um, my peers, and I know Shay and Chandler were talking to Patrice and Bruce and they were really great and they gave us some awesome quotes. Um, yeah, I guess they're on the slide there. But I also reached out to Todd Langston and he just got back to me. So I'll probably add one more after today. Um, but they, they had some really great things to say and it was good to see. So, um, Callum, the, the quotes refresh my memory. We've got, I mean, the quotes are really powerful for some very impressive people. I, you guys did a great job gathering those quotes. So, um, I see the, the, the buttons down below. So, right now there's three buttons, but we can have all of the quotes there so people can just like, you know, click and scroll across and get them all. Is that the idea? Yeah. Well, that, so first of all, that was, that was all. Um, Samantha's uh, work and she did a really good job getting the quotes and those are actually so I haven't updated the uh, the three buttons on the bottom but all of the quotes are actually on the right hand side in the comments mm -hmm. um, and so I can read them out if you'd like or um, if you click on the link you can just see them there do you want me to read them out or um, I, I read them on this morning but it's up to the rest of the committee would you like them to read the quotes or I think, we can, I think we can continue on. Yeah, okay. I, I've already read them as they've been presented. Yeah, we can continue. Can them too. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we definitely wanted to add a section for third party testimonials because like Callum said earlier, it just adds to the credibility of the website. Um, and then the FAQ section, we one of the most commonly asked questions that I found on other um, economic commission landing pages was like about taxes and mill rates and things like that so number one on our faq is what is the mill rate and then what resources are available also links back to the quinnipiac chamber of commerce um, because they have a lot of resources that they go in depth about and then lastly we have our call to action which is i'm a business owner looking to establish a presence what should i do next and we direct them to make contact um, with Tim, our economic development specialist, and have a conversation. Tim, what, what are the are the answers to this? So the answers are all right. Established, they're established already? Yeah, so. Um, one for the mill rate in Wallingford, for instance. Yeah. So the, the mill rate for real and personal property is twenty nine nineteen for each $1,000 of assessed value. And that's the answer to the first question. The answer to the second question is the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce works closely with the town of Wallingford to quote, make the connections that make positive things happen for business and the community at large. The answer to the question number three is to get started, contact our economic development specialist um, with the phone number and then email provided. Tim, without overstepping our bounds, can we say something a little bit more positive about the mill rate other than it's a, a good mill rate? 
I mean, can we say it's one of the most competitive in New England or it's in Connecticut or in the region or? Yeah, it, it is, in fact, one of the lowest in the region. So, so um, I'm, good. I'm questioning whether we should add that in. That, that's certainly fine by me. It's, it's factual. So, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's fine. What, what, where it gets a little bit, um, I mean, we, we have, I think, the lowest in towns our size, but that's a moving target, right? So every fiscal year, it's a moving target. Um, so I, I hate to get too specific, um, you know, but, you know, for example, there, there are smaller towns in some cases. There's 169 towns in, in Connecticut. So some of the smaller towns have got lower mill rates, but they have no infrastructure. They have no police departments, no fire departments because they're so small. Um, they share school districts, et cetera. So their mill rates are low, but people don't get any of the services they get in Wallingford. So, you know, this, it's, all, it's all relative. But I, I would be very comfortable uh, saying that, um, you know, at $29.19, uh, Wallingford has one of the lowest mill rates in the entire region. That, that is a fact. So, so if, if, you, if you went one step further and said, if they have one of the best mill rates within the region with full services available or few, few, full municipal services available or uh, the students will probably have a better way of saying it than I am. But in other words, if I don't know anything about Wallingford and to me, the mill rate makes a difference. I don't want only see the mill rate. I want to say, well, okay, is that competitive? I, I don't know. I'm not going to go through the 169 towns to find out if it's competitive. Okay. It's, you're telling me it's competitive. And besides that, we give you a full menu of municipal services. Um, you don't have to say the services, but do, do you see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to. And Mark, you can even go one step further. If you're going to um, extend the definition or explanation by what Tim says, that the only ones towns that have a lower mill rate are those that offer lower uh, services. If you add the services aspect, you can change the initial part to say we are the lowest, not we're one of the lowest. You can say for 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 towns of similar resources cap resource capabilities or offerings, Wallingford offers the lowest mill rate available or something along those lines. Yeah, I I don't think that we should get into a, a three paragraph explanation of the mill rate. But I, it, within a sentence beyond what just the mill rate is, I think we can explain that we're a very competitive mill rate within the region. And, oh, by the way, we have a full menu of municipal services available to you as a, as a resident, that type of thing. I think, I think it's excellent, excellent points. Excellent points. I, I, um... So, uh, I I just wrote quickly as as we were um, you know giving ideas. Longford has one of the lowest mill rates for real and personal property um, at twenty nine nineteen for each one thousand dollars, and then maybe adding something like with um, full municipal services provided as well. Yeah, offering a complete cadre of municipal services. I think. Yeah, but you don't don't forget to add in the fact that you're it's very competitive compared to the region, yeah, or however you want it. Yeah, as one, yeah, one of the lowest mill rates for real and personal property in, in the, maybe in the region. In the region, right? At twenty nine dollars and nineteen cents for each one thousand, it says value while offering a complete range of mis that's range right. of municipal services. Okay, a broad range. Does everyone like that? You need to add yes. that in the region part. Oh, right. Um, yeah. Good morning, Lynn. One of the lowest mill rates. Oh. Okay. Longford has one of the lowest mill rates in the region for real and personal property at twenty nine nineteen for each one thousand dollars of assessed value while offering a complete range of municipal services. I would say a broad range. Broad range. Yeah. Yeah, that's much better. Great. Yeah. 
Okay, and that uh, wraps up the last of the uh, the content changes to the landing page. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions or? Uh, hey, Colin, where it, if you could scroll back down to uh, resources, and I think uh, Sam said it, it links to the chamber site. Um, let's see what resources are available to help grow your business. The, the resources, I just was on our website, um, you know, the, the links that we have on there are, are you know, for state, um, you know, DECD, ad, advanced CT, uh, th that is a, even a lot of, a lot of questions that come in right now are COVID related. So we've got, you know, COVID related links. Um, I'd like to, um, you know, the chamber is linked above. Uh, I really, I feel as if the, the resources that are on the site now are the list that uh, you know we actively update um, unless someone sees a shortcoming there I'd just like to just copy that so we're just talking about this this list right here right no oh I'm sorry no uh, if you just so if you have to go back on our on the active website um, let me pull it back up so on the active website, um, on the left-hand rail, one of the left-hand rail items, it says um, helpful links. Yeah, uh, the the bottom link here, right? Yeah. All right, well, now I got to go back to you. So I'm hanging out. I'm, I'm on our website. I'm sure you guys can manipulate this stuff a lot faster than I can. But hang on a second. All right. So where are you? The very bottom. Yep. Right. So if you push that, what comes up? Well, that's the links to DECD and advanced CT and um, and again, I'm not as fast as doing this stuff as you guys are. So, uh, so when I click on helpful links, it's got a COVID-19 state of Connecticut uh, link. It's got utilities, electric, water, sewer, gas, state and region. It says advanced CT, DECD, the ECD tax incentives, uh, Department of Revenue Services, where people would figure out how to uh, have a tax ID number, Secretary of State's uh, uh, website, Workforce Alliance, for, uh, and it also has a link to the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, so we could just take this entire list and, and make that the, the answer. That might be easier. That would be my preference, and that's uh, but uh, uh, committee members. This would be the answer to number yeah. three. Number two. Number two. I'm sorry, number two. Yeah. 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 Tim, that group that you belong to, uh, Brokers Association? Yep. You belong to it or the town belongs to it? The town. The town. Yep. I'm wondering if you should add that in as a resource. If I'm a broker in Lodi, California, and I'm starting to look at some in interest in Wallingford or in Connecticut. Would that make a difference? I'm, I'm not sure the, the juice that the association has. I know it's helped you, but um, is well, it worth adding to the, the links? Yeah. There? yeah. You know, SAOR, which is a Society of International and Office Realtors, and then CCIM, which is another you know, commercial real estate group, th those are, those are uh, global organizations. So um, in SAOR in Connecticut, uh, which is what they refer to themselves as, you know, if you're, if you, if you meet the criteria, you just can't join because you pay the membership fee. There's, there are performance criteria. Uh, there are moral and ethical criteria that uh, criteria that you need to meet. Um, there's cer certain levels of deals that you have to be able to, you have to close to, and educational credentials that you have to have. So, and I, I, I witness this quite frequently in SIOR in Connecticut, for example, if they had a client looking to go to California, you know, San Francisco, they would reach out to the SIOR chapter in San Francisco to connect with the realtor if, in fact, they didn't work for one of the bigger brokerage houses now. So if you're a CB, CB Richard Ellis, CBRE broker and you're an SAOR, you're going to reach out to your West Coast office for CBRE first. Within that office, as I'm sure there's an SIOR. So I think, 
I guess it's a long way of explaining that. Um, I don't know that um, it's necessary to have on the website, Mark. I think it's uh, that those channels are established. I mean, they, if, a, if a broker is looking at this, uh, the next thing they're going to do is either reach out to me, which happens quite often. You'll, in my monthly report, you see that the brokerage direct contacts are always the highest. Um, and I think they'll be even higher once we launch this initiative in so many different ways. Um, and if, if they don't reach out to me, then they're going to reach out to, um, you know, brokers, again, in their own organization or within those professional channels. So. Well, that, uh, just one more question then. If Wallingford is a member of SIOR, is that what it's called? Yes. Is it worth putting somewhere in here that we're a member of SIOR? Does that make a difference to anyone who knows what SIOR is? Or it's it doesn't really make much difference? Um. Um, I'm not sure if uh, so what might help is we're also adding a, um, a section for accolades and awards so maybe just adding the seal of SIOR um, yeah it doesn't have to be in the resource question that we're yeah. talking about here but if it's valuable if there's some value to be belonging to it and I know it from your aspect there has been Tim yeah, from a sure. context standpoint, but is there some value that is recognized nationally to be part of SIR? You have to be morally correct. You have to do a certain number of sales. You have to do all those types of things. So is it worth it somewhere in the body of the of this, not necessarily this page, it could be anywhere as, as Samantha just said, maybe we should have the seal of SIOR or the name SIOR, just a lift. And any of the other ones that are valuable to us. So also one of the quotes in the, um, uh, third party testimonial section came from um, Mark Duclo. Yeah, Mark Duclo, who's the president of. He, he's the global Iowa. president. He's, he's a Connecticut guy, mm -hmm. office in Hartford, does a lot of work in Wallingford, um, and he is the global president this year of SIOR. I see. So um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. So, Sam, I think you nailed it. I, I, I like the idea because as as you're talking, you know, my, my wheels are turning as to how to how to present. I think that's perfect. We, you know, we put something someplace and I'll let the designers figure out where with the the uh, uh, the seal of SAOR and CCIM is the other one. Uh, and then we put something that says, you know, uh, I reckon that we, we fully support boom, SAOR, CCIM. And I think Mark, that's a great point. That, that those are those are organizations that do drive business for us. There is no question about it. Uh, so to have them mentioned, um, in case either you know a CCIM or, or an SAOR are looking um, to show that we fully support it, I think is, is good. Thank you. I just uh, sent a text to David. Uh, Tomchik, I, I don't know what happened, but uh, I haven't heard back from him yet. Just asking him if, if I don't know if something come up or. Hey Chandler, when you sent the reminders out, was was David on the on the reminder email? No, he wasn't. I could send him the link again. Yeah, I texted our our like student group. Okay, you could I'd appreciate that. Okay. So the uh, it's S S I O R, right? No, just one S. Okay. S I O R. Okay. All right. And the other is the acronym is C C I M. Okay. Hey, Callum, this is just a little visual thing is, uh, do you need to have that much space between the verbiage on the on question three, what should I do next and the box that contains Tim's information? Uh, you know, I think it's because we're zoomed in so far, but that is that is just the normal distance. Okay. So about okay. 100 pixels actually from each section to the next. Okay. Does right. anyone have any, sorry, go ahead. I would just go ahead, Calvin. I was going to ask the same thing you were going to ask. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, does anyone have any any final questions or, or thoughts before we continue? Nothing. Uh, great job. Great job, yeah. sir. Very impressive. Yeah, it looks good. All right, that's a um, great endorsement. So then what we'll do is, um, um, Callum, Sam, are you on that meeting tomorrow with uh, with us on the... the uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm not. No. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, we'll keep our meeting for tomorrow at uh, at noon, Callum, uh, uh, with it to be you, myself, and Lynn, just to talk about uh, going through the mechanics of how we make changes, and then we have to do an introduction on web solutions and start working through that. So, yep. okay, Sounds very good. good. Uh, well done, Callum, Sam, great job. Um, okay, Mark, if it's okay with you, we'll move on to uh, another channel for uh, talk about justifications briefly, and then just talk about uh, launch. Sounds good. Brenna, you ready? Yeah. So I will just quickly go over some of the base points for my justification for the Facebook page, which is the one I'm heading. Um, first off, I talked to the town manager of uh, Billerica, Massachusetts. He runs all of their social media pages, uh, the main one being their Facebook page, which is not an EDC page, but it's just kind of a general town page. But they started it because uh, of a vote, because of an economic development uh, program they were starting to improve parts of their town hall, and they needed to correct some misinformation before the vote so that the town was actually educated. And then they just grew it from that. Um, so it did start with economic development uh, values in mind, and they do still post about economic development. But uh, Clancy, the town manager, said that uh, he tries to post daily, which is way more than we're planning to do. And so because he posts daily, uh, there just isn't enough economic development news to hold people's attention that often. Um, but from what I told him about our plans and from his expertise, he's been running the page for like I think it was seven years now. Uh, he said that our plan sounds good. Because we aren't posting as much, we should be fine just sticking with economic development news uh, and tips about the town. Uh, other reasons to justify the Facebook page um, is a, a big uh, part of it is SEO and web traffic. Um, because of our Facebook posts, uh, there will then be a lot more backlinks to uh, our website and just information about Wallingford out there, that when people start searching about towns, Wallingford is a lot more likely to pop up. Um, and that's going to help increase our web traffic as well as just increase our SEO. Uh, so those are the two biggest things about it. The other was just building a community uh, so that when people search Wallingford, they're going to see, oh, they have an economic development page, their economic development is really involved in the community. That leads to this being a better place to start a business because we know that we can work more closely with them and that they're going to care. Uh, so that was just a main overview of the justification that I got. I don't know if anyone has any other questions about it. So Brenna, one of the uh, things that I can make is a lot of feedback. One of the justifications um, we talked about a, an account versus a page, two way versus one way. Could you just expand upon that, please? Yeah. So what we're going to be starting is a page. Uh, the difference is that uh, we have a lot more control. We're the only ones who can post. Uh, the page is going to have a title. Uh, I think what I have planned out right now is just uh, Economic Development Commission of Wallingford, Connecticut so that it's very clearly about economic development. There's no confusion there. Um, we're going to have one-way communication. We're going to turn off comments on all the posts. Uh, that way, if people want to message us, they message us uh, privately, and we don't have to worry about uh, those interactions. Um, so that simplifies it a lot, and it's uh, one of the main benefits of having a page instead of any other form of Facebook posting. The other thing if I can add that we spent a fair amount of time talking about is uh, we want to make sure that, that, that people recognize that this is an economic development um, Facebook page. 
not a town of Wallingford Facebook page. So, uh, you know, we get calls in this office because we also house program planning in this office every day. I have an old refrigerator. How do I get rid of it? How do I get rid of my leaves? There's a, there's a street light out in the corner of such and such. We just want to make sure that uh, people recognize that this is an economic development Facebook page, not the town of Wallingford Facebook page. Yeah, and that's why it's going to be in the title. It'll be in the about section uh, of what the page is about. Um, and it's going to be in the at, it's going to be like at EDC of Wallingford. Uh, so it's going to be in everything they're going to see. So yep. it's about as clear as it can be. Very good. I share, I know, I know you're all over it based on our, our discussions. I just wanted to make sure the, uh, um, the, you know, the, the committee was aware as well. So, so first message. Yeah, so I will share what I have uh, for messaging so far. Um. Good morning, David. Good morning. Sorry, I had this as nine o'clock on my calendar instead of eight thirty. No worries. I'm glad I reached out. All right. So uh, first off, just a generalized introductory post. Uh, the introductory post and the next two posts have uh, they were created uh, alongside the rest of the group who's heading up social media pages. So they will be uh, mostly very similar across the pages with some differences just in how the messaging is formatted because of the ways the different pages target people. Um, so the first page is just a welcome. Um, a generalized of what this page is going to be sharing and then a call to action to follow us to stay informed. And then the next one, all the uh, what's going to be posted is inside the quotations uh, is uh, introductory to the team of college students and uh, then a call to action to follow the other social media pages that will be created. Um, and then following in that series because uh, this is where the Facebook page differs from some of the other pages because we're planning on posting more often than the other pages and because of the way people scroll through Facebook we don't want any of the uh, posts to be too lengthy in words because people will see the block of text and then scroll right past it so how we have the introduction of the team set up is that one post is going to be a general like this is kind of the team that's working with the town of Wallingford um, a generalized of what we're doing. And then there's going to be like a content series almost of a post about who I am, why I'm running the page, a post about what we're doing with the town of Wallingford, and then some updates about what we're doing with the town of Wallingford. Like when the website goes up, we'll make a post about that. The website's been improved. People should check it out. Um, so the main reason behind that is just keeping things away from looking like a block of text that people have to read. Uh, those are the only posts that I have, not the only posts, but the first posts that I have completely laid out. I have ideas for other posts as well as notes on posts. Uh, the winning in Wallingford, I quickly mocked up a, a quick post while Shay was talking about it. Um, we, uh, me and the group of people who were also starting the LinkedIn and the Instagram, uh, took notes about hubcap and non-financial resources uh, that will then be put into posts later on and then I have generalized like filler posts about uh, tips of Wallingford some of them have to be rewritten because obviously this one was written in terms of being a new year's post we don't have the page up in time so that will be reworded um, but these were just generalized filler posts about things that we think are important uh, the college and universities close by the services we offer, uh, the small businesses and large businesses located inside of Wallingford, and then centralization. Uh, so Brenna, I think what, you know, what we'll do is we'll just refine some verbiage in each of the posts, but the subject matter is certainly yeah. discussed. So before anything posts, and just a reminder of the committee that you know, we, we have uh, we will approve anything and everything every no word goes on any you know in, in, into any channel without the approval of the committee um 
So yeah, we'll 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 tweak a couple of things, but I think the the messaging is uh, is pretty sound. Um, and I'd, I'd uh, welcome some comments from the committee. And then also, could you just talk about the audience? So yeah, so be aiming these messages at. Yeah. So first of all, uh, I did want to say my process for clearing these uh, right now is just sending them right to the EDC email. I don't know if there's any other emails that should be added to that list uh, for me to send them to as well to clear it with them or for them to have any outages. So there, there are three, and there may be, there's probably some crossover, but, um, you know, we talked about the Chamber of Commerce a number of times. They've got a database. Wallingford Center Inc. has got a database. EDC's got a database. I think we've got to talk about, for starters, you know, weaving those together and then, you know, build uh, build something from there. But okay. um, as, as well as messaging, and every, frankly, every bit as important as messaging is audience development. So. Uh, that, that that I think is going to be more work than the messaging itself is to continue to develop audience. Yeah, the audience development part uh, for starters uh, was going to be making a quick post on the forums, nothing too expansive that would uh, take a barrage of comments, just a, hey, we started this page. This is some of the content you might see on there, just to have it sent out to the, the biggest group of Wallingford residents that you can find is the easiest way to build a base uh, following. And then from there to uh, follow other towns. So we would follow like the town of Brantford, um, Southington, any other towns in Connecticut that have Facebook pages, follow other government organizations for Connecticut and such. That way, when people search those pages, we have a better chance of coming up as a similar page that they should follow. So if they follow a bunch of town pages or if they follow other government pages uh, in Facebook, the way the algorithm works is sometimes it'll give you other pages you should follow or other people you should follow. And that way we have a better chance of coming up in that section for people who would have an interest in our page. Very good. And again, right. just target audiences um, more towards you just talk about the profile of the target audience that we had discussed you, and you had written about in your justification report yeah target audience uh is going to be small business owners uh, and individuals uh as well as like large businesses aren't as much a target as something we're going to generally associate ourselves with by sometimes following those pages um but it's it's mostly going to be to build community outreach so the community is our main target so for the committee's perspective um you know, this is going to be a this is a small business development initiative this is the type of thing that could help um encourage people to uh you know populate sole proprietorships you know start you know small partnerships let's call them the center street businesses the um you know the the, the smaller type businesses that obviously are sprinkled throughout our entire community but i look at this and say boy if we could we could if this would help populate a couple of uh, storefronts on center street how great would that be right mm -hmm. tim uh, how, how can how can we disseminate this fact that we have this facebook page out to the general population of wallingford what what is what is our vehicle for doing that just being on facebook or do we want to get something to the chamber and let them disseminate it? Do we want to, you know, through their membership? Do we want to do it through the library? Do we want to do it through a newspaper ad? Do, uh, how are we going to disseminate this? If I could, if I could comment, uh, Mark, I think there's uh, a number of Wallingford community pages that already exist. The Wallingford Community Forum, I think, is is the largest Facebook group in town. Um, I would post in there that this group exists because those are the kind of people that you, it's, it's the largest audience uh, in town that you can, can get to, uh, to jump in. Uh, that was, that was going to be a comment I was going to make. Uh, it's probably the best place to advertise it. And then, you know, any of the other uh, business type things, you could even pop something on LinkedIn, to be honest with you, that would, uh, that would also promote it. Uh, the other question I had, Brenna, um, is, um, are there going to be rules? Every group that I join, there are rules because they have a tendency to get very unruly. Um, you know, so it, 
what's what's the plan for that to to try and because these things can take on a life of their own to the point that you want to close it down (laughs) so uh to hit on your first uh mark's point about uh reaching out the forums is 100 percent part of my plan whether we reach out using the page or using a personal account whether i'm in the groups i followed them just to kind of see what they were like um whether i post in there and say hey look at this page that was created uh or we do it in a more formal context that can still be discussed uh also cross posting about the linkedin and instagram pages on the facebook as well as the other way around the linkedin page posting about the facebook page uh is also part of what we've discussed um uh sorry remind me of the second point i just completely blanked <laughs> oh the um you know the rules uh for for the page Correct. Yeah, so the way a page works, uh, it's not like a forum. So a forum, you need rules. You have a moderator who moderates what happens. A page doesn't have that because we are the only ones who can create a post and we have control over those postings. So we make a post, we can then turn off comments on that post, which is what our plan is to do. So then we don't have to spend time moderating those and we don't have to make rules about comments. We just don't have comments. And then the final comment that I'll make, um, and Tim, this may be just through our, our contacts. I know the Harriman Real Estate, there's a lot of people uh, in town, businesses in town who are, you know, would be friendly to, to uh, through their pages, kind of invite folks to, um, to, uh, to endorse or either endorse it or just mention it uh, on their pages. And that will just, you know, kind of a word of mouth thing, old fashioned word of mouth. I think that would be uh, a great way, uh, at least locally to, uh, to introduce the page. Agreed, completely agreed. So how do we do that technologically, Brenna? Do I give you names of businesses? I mean, how do you, how do you find those businesses that uh, Anthony's talking about? Yeah, so there's multiple ways. Uh, you could give me names of businesses that you know have a Facebook presence within the town or just are within the town and have a Facebook presence. Um, and then I would message them and say, hey, we started this page. This is what we're posting. Take a look at some of our posts. Would you be willing to either make a post in conjunction with us where they post something and link to us, uh, just post announcing that we're a thing? Um, so it would just be, you give me businesses, I'd contact them. We'd talk about what kind of posts they would be willing to create that would, uh, kind of give us a shout out. Okay. Great, Great point, Anthony. We, you know, we, we have to obviously leverage the relationships that we have with so many businesses and run a few edification, uh, Harriman real estate is the one that I think they started the Wallingford Facebook forum, the, the original one, and, and they are still yep. the administrators of that forum and it is it is conversational so uh, to be a good one to start with so comments from committee members um we've got uh the once um it's, let's see i've got i brenna you didn't share your uh, justification report with anybody but me is that correct correct i can send it out to other emails if you would like um yeah. uh, yes if you would send it out to the committee Okay. We had a couple of edits that we went through, but uh, so now it's ready. Send it out to the committee. Mm-hmm. So, committee members, I'm, what I guess what I'm saying at this point is, um, uh, we, we've got a we've got a message. We've got a, a, a message to start with. Uh, and, and Anthony, your um, your your warnings echo in my mind all the time about having some sort of a. Um, you know, a repository of, of messages. We we are three to four deep at this point. And Brenna, the, the objective is to do a Facebook posting once every two weeks. Is that correct? Uh, Facebook would be more often. Uh, I, I go between uh, thinking that twice a week would be good or once a week would be good. So I, I need to do a bit more research onto maybe how much people want to see it, uh, as well as just how many posts deep I can get and then how long that would last us just for the sake of like, how long can we keep this up? Okay. All right. All right. I, um, you know, rather than from my standpoint, I think from a LinkedIn perspective, I think we're ready to roll. Uh, but I think we've got to tie the rest together before, you know, lights start turning green. So, um, any other comments or questions, concerns from committee members at this point? 
uh, I'm not quite sure I understood what you said, Tim. You mentioned LinkedIn. Are you talking about did all I, the social I'm, media I'm together? Or? <laughs> did I say LinkedIn? I, I met, uh, you know, Brandon just doing Facebook. Okay. So we, I think, I think we're ready um, for a face to, to launch messages on Facebook. But what I envision is us kind of entering the market simultaneously. So um, I just asking if there's any from committee members, any concerns at this point is to uh, getting started here within the next couple of weeks. Uh, any, any other things that we need to satisfy before we start turning lights green on, on the Facebook side? Tim, from my perspective, I think Brennan did, did a great job getting us started here, but it's something that Anthony said a couple of meetings ago and Brenna just mentioned in her, her follow-up, and that is we have to get pretty deep into the information so we have something going once or twice a week yep. because I, I could just see us two weeks down the road or three weeks down the road saying, uh, what are we going to talk about now? Um, and now we got problems. So uh, I, I, that's the, o the only thing that I can see putting a snafu on this whole thing is that we don't have enough content to keep us going for a lengthy period of time. Yeah, I will say one of the ways I am working to keep that off uh, is by doing content series instead of singular posts. So having a theme to different types of content is easier to keep creating it because you're like, okay, let's think along this single line. What can I think about? What can I divide into multiple posts? Um, so having, I have a content series about this group uh, where I'm gonna post updates, uh, personal bios, um, as well as uh, tips and tricks about Wallingford, pulling from the website and from the pamphlets we have sent out, uh, just generalized information, but in a more catchy way, instead of just stating a fact, making it a bit more of like a, look at what we have a bit more showy. Um, and so keeping those content series is how I plan to keep that going. So it's a lot easier than just putting out random messages. Mm -hmm. Uh, thanks for, for saying that. I, I think if you come up with an ideas or a list of ideas that you're going to start working on, if you could send that to the committee, because the committee then can say, oh, that's a great idea. Why don't you add this in? Or why don't you add that in? Or why don't you think about this? You're just going to have five other minds that are going to be, you know, giving you information that you can either accept or dismiss. Yeah, if, I have some listed down both in my notebook and on the Google Doc page I'm using. I'll send right. those out along with my justification. That's perfect. That's perfect. And if you can keep that going as your time goes on, mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to find it'll be easier for you to start coming up with ideas if other people are feeding you some ideas too. So I Brenna and, and Mark to those points. Um, so, you know, the content calendar concept is, is something that is, is going to be woven across all, you know, of the social media platforms, including the email platform. So, um, uh, right now, Brenna, we have the four that we had discussed several weeks ago with the entire group. Um, but if you if you want to just start adding these, so um, you know, I have Ulrich Rolling Mill is one, Proton Beam Therapy Center, um, Anthenol, uh, which is, has their world headquarters in Wallingford, for just acquired another company. Um, we talked about doing the college outreach and explaining that uh, we're reaching out to. Uh, colleges for workforce development initiatives. So uh, under workforce development, we have college outreach program, we have STEM town. So at least in my mind, I'm 10 or 12 deep right now, but it would help if, if uh, we had that probably in writing. So to Mark's point, everybody can comment because the more, and, and the other thing that I guess doesn't concern me as much um, is that, you know, economic activity is, it breathes all the time. It, it just is always seems to be something you know, that pops up. Um, every month when I do a, a staff report for the commission, I include, you know, what's been in the news in the last 30 days um, about economic development. And I think w without exception, there's there's at least seven or eight articles that appear in a 30 day span in a local newspaper about what's taking place in different areas of economic development. So um, I think it's one of those things that it'll, it'll you know, start to flow because there's always something uh, to say, but keeping that content calendar and making sure that we, again, we, we, uh, you're working with John and Chandler and, and um, 
you know, as far as, you know, uh, and Shay, as far as what we're going to have um, in that content mix is going to be important. So it's got to be a doc that you guys can all share and that we can see so that we can amend and add and as we go. Yeah, I think, uh, I know David was the one who originally shared that. I know it's shared with the whole uh, student team. Are, are they on, uh, do they have access to the Google uh, Drive folder that you made? I do not think so. Okay. Yeah. Because that's where I'm creating all these postings. That's where I'm organizing everything. Um, so it is, it's at least available to the whole student team. Uh, we can work on getting that available to you guys as well. The, um, the pipeline, will we also be um, giving news about that as well? Because they're very connected with the um, businesses in Wallingford. Sure. That's another As far as meeting their needs. That. Workforce Development Initiative, right? Workforce Development, yes. Yeah, for any of these ideas, uh, if you guys do want to just shoot me an email with vacation that I could then create a post out of, because you're saying names and I don't necessarily know what you mean with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just shooting me an email with like, this is the main point, this is some like bullet points about it. Yeah. <laughs> Nice start. Any other questions, comments about Facebook? Um, LinkedIn? Uh, so for LinkedIn, um, I didn't, you asked me to find more businesses. I couldn't find like business examples, but there's a lot of statistics that help um, LinkedIn in its favor. For example, um, LinkedIn is found 277% more effective than gener uh, generating leads than Facebook. And 93% um, of uh, B2B marketers consider LinkedIn to be the most effective site um, for lead generation. So I think uh, because of this, um, we will have a strong, like, I guess, platform to generate leads um, back to um, Wallingford and the EDC. I didn't really find towns um, on LinkedIn. And when you Google like town, it comes up with like people with their last name of towns. So um, if there was a bunch of different people who weren't necessarily like what we were looking for. But um, there, Facebook has 2.5 billion users worldwide and LinkedIn has um, 660 million users. So it's a quite a smaller audience, but because it's a smaller audience, it's more specific. And with that specificity, I think we get like the professionalism and these people, they're looking for leads and they're looking for solutions for their business. Whereas Facebook, you might be looking for entertainment or news. It might not necessarily be along the professional vein. Um, and uh, because of that, there is uh, LinkedIn makes up 80% of B2B conversations, 80% more um, uh, than other social media sites. So like Facebook, Twitter, link, uh, Instagram. And um, that also leads to the click-through rate, which LinkedIn is responsible for 64% of all like social media visits to the corporate site. So if, if I'm on LinkedIn, I'm 64% more likely to click to the Wallingford, why Wallingford or winning with Wallingford page. Um, but the difference is we have a slight challenge in that we're a town and it's less um, like when I follow business, there's a, an understood exchange where like this business is going to give me a service or a product. And um, with a town, like we have to, we have to um, define our benefit when we like message people and when we um, send out content. 
So Chandler, you're you're going through the justifications, and I appreciate that. So uh, um, I don't believe I've received the re written report from you at this point. So I can send that to you after this. Okay. All right. So um, yeah, send it to me. That's that we can go through it, and then we can send it out to the committee once we've gone through at least the our first pass together. If that's okay with everybody. Okay. Let's let's talk about uh, launch strategy at this point. Um, with the launch strategy, I have a welcome post and I have a um, post about the team and we have other like, I have other ideas about the team and I mean about the post. Here, I could share my screen. So here is like my first post. Um, with LinkedIn, there's like posts and then there's articles. I was thinking we'd post this on uh, as an article. So um, I read that uh, if you have a custom made image, um, you're twice as likely to have comments and engagement on that post. So I just did a quick um, welcome to Wallingford. And I also, I linked back to other social media um, Instagrams and Facebooks on that initial post. And I think that's something that we can continue on every post. Like if you want to see more, check out the EDC Instagram, the EDC Facebook. All right. I think we, um, we've got a little bit of work to do on that, but I think it's a, it's a great start. I, okay. And then I was thinking we have like our town and when, when I get everyone's picture, I could put their picture uh, in this. And then um, I have a longer, like a longer thing because uh, LinkedIn is more professional. So Just I want it to be a longer article. How are you? How are you feeling? And then um, we, you mentioned that you want to give credit to the people behind um, the post. So I said a little bit about the author and then I have potential like initiatives that we could do here. Right. So, um, I'm, I'm referring to an email that, uh, professor Tomczyk sent out, uh, after we had met uh, when I had met with the team. Um, and I just, I'm trying to look and see if these messages are in sync with, uh, what we had, put together or get across all channels. So certainly the welcome to Wallingford is. The next was uh, the win winning in Wallingford, a showcase of the relationship between the town and success for business and individuals. That would be post number two. What you've got up here now, the student marketing team, um, that, that, was, that was post number three. And then on post number four, we're going into energy and energy costs. So um, I guess we need to just revisit that. We can do that offline, Chandler. But, okay. Sounds good. Because the, the continuity, I, I like the format. Um, I, I like this this one in particular to introduce the team. I think that's uh, that's a really nice way of doing it. If everybody's comfortable having their pictures up there, I, I like putting names and faces together. I think most people do. Um, uh, but it's it's I can't stress enough how essential it is that uh, you know we are very like minded with messages across all channels, and it's it's more so that we can control and understand what's going out from this side. Because we want to make sure, again, um, you know, it's a sensitive subject matter. We want to make sure that nothing gets misstated or overstated. Uh, so if it's okay with the committee, I'll work with Chandler on uh, refining the, the, the messages here. Um, and then I would say, Chandler, talk to me about audience development. I mean, we can send all this stuff out into the cyberspace, but who's on the other end of it? How do we? I think because it's a professional site we want to have the businesses in the town of wallingford um but that doesn't exclude like just general people from the public we could reach out to the brokers i think it's the people that wallingford does business with should be the the people that we're at least initially targeting and then like brenna said like we can go on the forums and we could post there like hey join our our, our linkedin posts uh, with a lot of things with um social media it's a lot of like 
growing an audience is a lot of like brute force. Like you have to be promoting it continuously and also continually posting because that's what gets people engaged. If they see a, a LinkedIn or a Facebook with five posts, they're not going to want to stay. I guess that's my, my big question is we send out that first message. Who's on the other end of it? Who's getting it? Um, initially it would be the people who are involved with Longford, but if you wanted to target more people, uh, we mentioned like uh, office space users and I thought deeper, I read an article where, um, so, like Silicon Valley tech people are leaving. So potentially we could start like looking into that and because they use a lot of energy and they also need a lot of a class a office space all right anthony we may need to tap you a little bit as far as audience development is anthony still on the call um it sounded like he had to take another call oh okay a, a few minutes ago all right all right um I think we're on a, we're on a good track, uh, Chandler. Maybe uh, in between uh, our committee meetings, you and I need to get together, maybe with David, and, and uh, we need to just refine a couple of things. But uh, we're in a good space, I think. Committee members, any comments? Good for my spot, Tim. Okay. I, I'm trying to be mindful of the hour at this point. I know it's getting it's getting on. Um, um john you want to so chandler thank you very much and i'll be in touch okay okay uh john you want to jump in and um and i don't mean to, to rush you but uh yeah no no problem instagram <clears throat> um so starting off with uh some justification um i reached out to the person that runs the um instagram account for for my town um <clears throat> and i basically asked them how the growth and the creation of their Instagram account has helped not only the community, but the business, um, small businesses, large businesses, kind of just as a whole in the town. Um, <clears throat> and they posted a poll on their account, kind of asking the community what the impact had has had on them. Um, so it was more coming from the people that are actually being affected by the account rather than just them. Um, and from what the results that they gave me, um, the most common ideas were that um, <clears throat> it created a relationship um, with people and small businesses. So it kind of um, was the start in building a relationship between the community and these small businesses. Um, and people that had businesses in Wallingford felt um, that the town was helping them out a lot because having the town Instagram account post about their small business, definitely it helped their business and it helped, helped bring awareness to them. Um, <clears throat> and then the other most common answer was that um, it helped build a connection with the community in Morristown and um, <clears throat> helped people that lived in Morristown feel more a part of the community. Um, whether that was giving them updates on the town that they may not have seen otherwise, um, or just getting to see more of the town than they may be able to see just from where they go on a daily basis, kind of giving them like an overall look of, of the town and what it has to offer them as a resident, but also as a, a business or a prospective business owner. <clears throat> and then um, <clears throat> starting off with uh, audience development, um, <clears throat> Uh, I, th I think that we should start off by reaching out to and following small businesses in Wallingford and asking that they share the account with their followers. Um, How do you do that, John? Um, so it, it would just be I've, I could find um, the Instagram account first of small businesses in Wallingford and just send them a message. Um, kind of just like, hi, we created this account. Like We'd like to share it with more people in Wallingford. Like, we'd really appreciate it if you could share it with your followers. Um, and then um, going off of that, that's kind of very similar to um, Brenda's reaching out in the Facebook forums. So we could also do that as well. Um, just It's just more people to reach out to and more 
people that can follow the Instagram account. Um, and then once we can eventually build a, at least a little bit of a following from both the Facebook forums and reaching out to small businesses and asking that they can post about it, <clears throat> um, just asking that the followers spread along the account to their friends and family. Um, I, th I think that that would be very effective because it's, it's updates on the town's economic development. So kind of just keeping um, people and their families informed. And then <clears throat> um, for content, I can share my screen. Uh, let's see. So let's see. So for the first post, I found this image on Google, and I think it's a because on Instagram you have to have an image with a with a caption. Um, so for the first post, I was thinking something along the lines of this, where it shows Wallingford, and it's kind of a very like a picture you'd see as like a welcome to Wallingford, um, and then with the same relatively the same caption as um, Brenna had on Facebook. Um, Welcome to the Wallingford Economic Development Committee Instagram account. We want to be able to share all the exciting town happenings regarding our business community, as well as some neat facts about our lovely town that you may <clears throat> not know about. And then the call to action, um, give us a follow to stay well informed. Um, would anybody have any issues or concerns with that, that picture? I guess not. Okay. Um, and then for winning in Wallingford, um, I was going to ask you guys, um, <clears throat> so I think on Instagram, a good way to show winning in Wallingford could be through showcasing a specific business that's been striving during the pandemic. Um, so not only we can help highlight and create that relationship between the businesses and the community, but also <clears throat> show some of the help that the town has given them during, during this time to kind of show that um, businesses are not only striving in Wallingford and doing very well, but also that the town is there to help them, um, especially during a time like this. Um, so would you guys have any recommendations for, for businesses that... I can think of a half a dozen of them off the top of my head, so... Because I, th I think that um, kind of showing the business the help that was given to them <clears throat> um, alongside a picture of the business and the owner um, would be a great post to kind of begin that winning in Wallingford um, message. So for example, John, you got a picture there of, of Simpson Court. Um, if, if, uh, and right in the backdrop of that picture is a, that yellow building, that's a tavern on Main. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we did a lot as a community to take and, and allow outdoor dining in that parking lot where those cars are parked. Mm -hmm. That was the corner up area where tables were set up with umbrellas. And so that's a that's a great success story. So we get a, if you if I understand you correctly, we get a picture of the owner, maybe a comment yeah. the, from the owner saying, hey, thanks to the town, I was able to, you know, keep my business alive during the pandemic yeah. because that type of thing. So exactly. So, so how do we, who gets the picture? Who makes the contact? Um, if I I can't understand, John. You Anybody just else? broke up. Yeah. Can you, can you hear me now? No. Shall I get from my phone again? No, I think you should probably call in from your phone again, like you did last time. Yeah, while we're on pause, I think uh, since this picture was taken, we've, um, I think the uh, the town has updated all of the uh, the gardens. This whole green section here is much nicer looking now, so we might want to just take that same viewpoint but an updated picture for sure it'll look nicer is it is it better to hear me now yes yes okay um so so yeah i agree, I, I agree I, rob 
So I can, if I can get the person's name and their email, I, I can definitely reach out to them and get whatever um, the quote and whatever information would be beneficial for the post from them. Yeah, I just, I just want to stress, John, and I just, again, I'm, I'm, you know, making sure that you're willing, but all of the channel managers have to take and create their content. Mm -hmm. So I think your content concepts are solid. Um, they need to be in conjunction with. So, David, I guess at some point you guys are talking about a, a shared Google Doc that <clears throat> have our messaging across all channels, so we're all on the same page. Yeah, uh, I think but, that would be the best way to consolidate all data. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if, if if John, you're suggesting you know photographs of this or that, then certainly you know we can have a phone call. But I'll introduce you to the people. <clears throat> you can ask them to take the picture for you. I guess I'm not sure. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, because. I, I feel like Instagram is going to be, it's going to have the same message, but it's going to be depicted in a, in a different way sometimes. Right. Um, because Instagram is a lot more casual and um, kind of more laid back than uh, especially LinkedIn, but also Facebook. So kind of showing the same messages, but in a more casual way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then for... Yeah. Sorry to keep you up, I've just got, I've got to, I've got to run everyone. I've got a meeting soon. I've got to prepare for it. But um, if there's anything I miss, uh, um, I'll ask Sam to update me and <clears throat> I will talk to you tomorrow. Hey, hey Cal, for our meeting tomorrow, um, are we just, uh, are we just doing a phone call? You know, no, we were going to do a, a, no, uh, I will send you a, an invite to Google meet. But. Now that you said that, I thought maybe you already did. But um, if you haven't, please send one. If you did, then I've already got it. I think I've ever seen it. Will do. Talk to you then. Thanks, Cal. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so going back to the next post, which is kind of showcasing um, us. Um, <clears throat> so I think that the, w the way Brenna did it, where she separated it into two different posts, I think that I could just include both of those in one post. Um, so my idea was to have the same, um, original thing that, um, Facebook had at first, which was the, did you know that Wallingford, um, has been working with a team of college students in order to market their economic development. And then underneath that, the quote about me, um, so kind of showing our team and following our different socials and then, um, who like who's running the Instagram account. I think that can all be put into one post. Um, <clears throat> and then for the energy and energy costs, I think that if I could get a specific quote from somewhere that highlights some specific prices and how those prices might be higher in other parts of Connecticut or the region, um, to kind of, rather than just saying it, um, having like, numbers that I could put into a, in a um, infographic and make it, make it into a picture. Um, and then also asking the businesses directly about their thoughts on the energy costs and then compiling a list of short quotes. Um, and then <clears throat> while the picture could be um, highlighting the numbers, the caption could be highlighting um, what business owners have had to say about the, the energy costs. That was kind of my initial idea for what to do for that post. All right. Again, I think we need to we have, need some refinement, but you are right on the right on the track as as we had set several weeks ago. So we could talk more about um, how to get the pictures and how to illustrate. Yeah. So, so, John, target audience, again, is what is the profile? Um, so I think initially the target audience is going to be reaching out to existing businesses in Wallingford and asking that they share the account. So kind of growing our um, <clears throat> follower base with people that are already interested in, um, whether that be businesses or other things, Wallingford. So kind of um, <clears throat> attracting those people first. And then after that... Um, asking that the followers spread the account along to their friends and family. It's kind of once we can build those, that first group of people that is very interested in things in Wallingford, <clears throat> um, as they're coming from either the Facebook forums or other small business Instagram accounts, um, having it spread to friends and family to 
to uh, bring the follower count higher and keeping it so that people are all within Wallingford and we're not getting followers from others, other parts of the country. And frequency, John? <clears throat> um, I think that, I mean, Instagram, as long as you don't fl flood the feed. Um, so I would say definitely not daily, but two to three times a week could be relatively good. But if we have, if we're running low on content, we could do um, one to two feed posts a week. And then we could um, occasionally post things on the story as well, which um, is there for 24 hours. And then you can save it to a highlight. It's called a highlight on the account so that um, <clears throat> it's on the account, but it's not flooding people's feed. Um, so that's, that's another good way to um, spread updates that may not be um, able to be translated into an actual post, but things that can just be shared to the story, whether that be um, new articles that we found or, or were created about Wallingford, um, just things that we can share with people. All right. I think once a week is, is um, probably uh, aggressive. So any more than once a week, I would be frightened of. <laughs> for, okay. Just for our ability to keep up with it on this side. Yeah. <clears throat> Does, can you post similar content to both Facebook and Instagram accounts and even yeah. LinkedIn for that matter so that uh, you're not trying to do it? If you're trying to update all, all of those um, platforms, you're not, you don't have to come up with three separate announcements. Or three yeah, separate so on Instagram, you can actually um, set the account so that when you post things on Instagram, it goes directly to the Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so... And you, once you do that, you have the option to kind of edit how the image or the, the post is going to be shown on Facebook. So you can have the same message showed on both Instagram and Facebook. And, and I apologize if you already mentioned this. Uh, I'm trying to multitask here myself. Um, do Are there different audiences that use both of those, do you think, in, in terms of how we're going to use it? Um, uh, do you, or do you think that there's there's some people who are are going to primarily eighty are going to use eighty percent of their time on Instagram and others that are going to do eighty percent of their time on Facebook? Or they, if they're going to go on one, do they also automatically go on another? I just want to see how much of this is redundant and how much of this would be <clears throat> targeted to specific and, and unique audiences. Um, I think alongside the the business updates, Instagram is going to be more targeted towards showing, <clears throat> kind of showcasing the town as more than than just these business updates. So it's gonna be, like even if people go on both Instagram and Facebook, the Instagram is also gonna kind of show what the town looks like, I guess, for people that may be looking more into the town, they're gonna be able to go on the Instagram account and kind of get an actual visual, visual representation of the town, whereas to Facebook, they may only be able to read these posts. Um, that are our messages, but they won't be able to actually see kind of what the town looks like. Um, so it kind of gives that that different aspect to it. I can also talk on that. I think there is definitely going to be differences in, in messaging. As John said, it'll be a lot more like welcome to the town on the Instagram and the Facebook is going to be a lot more informative of like, here are some facts, here are some articles. Um, <clears throat> there's also definitely uh, divergence in audience. Instagram tends to pull towards a younger audience, uh, whereas Facebook is an older audience. Uh, you will see more of an overlap from the Instagram to the Facebook because the younger audience does still use Facebook. They're not as frequently, but you won't see the older audience going on Instagram as much because that is a primarily uh, younger demographic. Until the old, <clears throat> until the older people start using Instagram, and that'll drive all all the next generation to some, to another platform. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that probably won't happen for a while. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll ruin it for them just out of spite, if nothing else. <laughs> that'll be up to your generation, actually, not us. We've already ruined Facebook. You can ruin Instagram for the younger generation. Any anything else for John at this point? I think I'm right, standing. Um, obviously, some refinement to do, but uh, well done. <laughs> Thank and you. I'll, I'll look for that uh, 
the, the justification report. I know yeah. you did send it, but it, uh, we know we had some technical difficulties. So. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll send it over again. Yeah, thanks again. Yep. All right, rounding out the group is Shay with email. Yeah, um, so for my justification, um, it wasn't as necessary to do justification for email marketing as it was social media. Um, so mine's more about audience and frequency, um, but kind of covering justification, um, the purpose of the email marketing um, is basically to just inform the readers about the town of Wallingford um, by showing the benefits. Um, we have a latest news section and the existing companies who have had success stories in the town. Um, so basically we have different sections um, and these sections will change based on like the format's gonna stay the same for the email marketing, but the um, content will change. And we're looking to send it out every two weeks. Um, so for the audience, we're gonna start by building our own email list um, so that's going to start with the existing businesses that we have in Wallingford. Um, so this will kind of just, we'll just send this out to them. It's kind of showing them the benefits and whatever. And then we're going to have um, something that'll say like pass it on. So it's going to encourage them to spread the word about Wallingford, um, forward it to their connections and people that they know that might be looking to move a business to Wallingford. Um, so that's kind of how we're going to reach new businesses. And then I also think that we could reach new businesses with this email marketing <clears throat> through LinkedIn. Um, so if we found like a connection on LinkedIn, LinkedIn or found somebody who we thought was going to be able to like move their business to Wallingford, um, we could send them along with messaging them on LinkedIn. We could send them like a follow-up email um, so that would also be how we're building our email list. And then, um, also by sending it to brokers because then the brokers could forward it to their clients. Um, so hopefully that would be how we would attract new businesses. Um, and then, like I said, frequency every two weeks, and then we want to avoid repetition by differentiating each email that we send. So like I said, we'll be changing the latest news, we'll be changing the companies that we're highlighting that are in Wallingford. Um, we'll be changing the quote that is going to be on it um, every two weeks and then changing the latest news based on um, kind of like what's in the media, what's going on at the time in Wallingford and any opportunities that they have for businesses. Um, but yeah, I have, do you want me to show the what I have now, Tim, and it needs like a lot of changes now that um, I saw the website. We also wanted to keep the website and the email marketing consistent in their messaging. So I was waiting for the website to be um, done with the content and stuff so I could make that um, similar to the email. I, I think we can hold off until you make the edits. Okay, yeah, right. that's what I figured. Yeah, very good, Shay, thank you. So I guess, um, David, we're going to need uh, some help. From for me, it's a matter of um, weaving things together. So mm -hmm. let's start with uh, frequency. So we've got Brenda saying you know, a couple of times a week, me saying, all right, maybe once. <laughs> um, we've got Jay saying, you know, probably once every two weeks. Um, so I guess what I envision is a just a, a digital calendar that shows, you know, the months of January and February and a starting point with dates where it says, okay, Brenna's, this is a date, Brenna's, Brenna's gonna send out a Facebook message. Um, or these are the dates in the month, Brenna's sending something out. These are the date Shay is sending something out, John, Chandler, et cetera. These are the dates these things are gonna be sent out. So we have some visual here to say, that's that's what's going out and then the other thing i need to see is is the content mm -hmm. right for each and i don't know if you can do that you guys are much more technologically astute than i am but if there's a way that i can click on a a cell on a calendar for january whatever 15th and, and, and behind that it says okay here's the here's the theme 
and here are the messages that, that are scheduled to, to go. That so there actually should be a, a fairly simple way. If we create a shared Google Calendar, mm -hmm. and that way each person can, on a day that they are planning to post, they can post, hey, I'm posting on Tuesday, and then in the description, here's the what the post actually contains, or attach the relevant document that says, here's images and any text or whatnot that needs to be approved. So that way, Tim, you would be, you and the committee would be easily able to go in, see, oh, this is the frequency, this is the the platform, and this is what the posts are. And then people can plan out days, weeks, even months in advance, and it becomes a shared document that coordinates everything in one simple location. That's That sounds like exactly what uh, I, I'm looking for. And then at the same time, when things happen, I, I can go into that document and say, here's subject for discussion on another potential mm -hmm. element to be sent out. And it becomes the fodder for, you know, additional conversations. Right. Yep. So that was, that's one thing that's residing in my head is like, now that we've got, we, we've come all this way and we're almost ready to throw the light switch that it's, it's a matter of, who's sending things out when, and maybe there's something to be said for staggering them, maybe not. I just, in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm saying all this stuff is kind of like mirroring back at this point to this office saying, I've got to try to keep track of who's doing what and when. Um, and then of course the, the content of the messages um, uh, is, is a, is a, uh, is not, not a concern, but it's, it's essential that we have a grasp. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, um, so that, that calendar becomes um, critical. The other thing is uh, that resides in my mind is we, we are in the process, and I know this is an evolving thing, but is building an audience. You know, I just, in my lifetime, have seen so many well-intentioned marketing plans that send out all kinds of great messages, and, but who's receiving them? And, and are, are we building the proper audience? Are we hitting the proper targets? You know, Instagram, Facebook, um, for the most part, those are going to be aimed at, at smaller business, the kind of kind of smaller businesses. A lot of a lot of individuals. I look at the, um, um, you know, LinkedIn is is more business centric. Email is what we build it, so we can make that very business business centric towards bigger businesses as well. But it's a matter of building audience. So. I want to continue to have some audience development, you know, uh, component to all these discussions. Because mm -hmm. how big is our audience? How many followers do we have? How do we how do we measure that? And what are we doing, you know, on a regular basis to to build audience? So maybe that's got to be calendared as well. I mean, and how do we measure it? You know, from a Facebook standpoint, we have X number of followers on January first. Well, how many do we have on the fifteenth? How many do we have on the thirtieth? How much do we have in the middle of February? How are we building audience? And how do we know we're hitting the targets? Totally fair. That could be tracked possibly most easily in like a Google Sheet where we just have, here's the, the time point markers. So January 15th, January 31st, February 15th, February 28th. And we just do every half month or whatever frequency that we so desire. And everyone would be able to just very quickly pull down what's the number of followers and or likes on any of their posts, post, uh, post that into the sheet. And that way we can see, is there growth? Is it steady state? Is it declining or whatnot? And so what might we do in order to incentivize more people coming or accelerate the growth rate? Yeah, and, and if I can just ex ex extrapolate on that as well, I think from the initial beginning, uh, the objective was how does this entire program change and improve from where we were we, before we had this whole program? So this whole initiative, so we can measure hits, likes, people visiting website visits and all that, that's all wonderful. And certainly the Googles and the Facebooks of the world, that's what they focus on. Hey, you have another thousand people looking, but does that translate to 
the bottom line. And it doesn't necessarily need to be financial. I mean, that's ultimately what, what we want to do is build our tax base and our and our and our um, uh, diversity of businesses in town and that sort of thing. But certainly, we might find that there's that if we if, that there may be not a financial benefit, but maybe there's other benefits we haven't considered. How we how we define that ultimately. We have to be able to measure the success and um, prudency of this entire program versus where we were prior. And I'm not sure we have that metric defined yet, but um, you know, otherwise we're putting a lot of effort in and have a lot of people look at our websites, but what's the end result? Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, Rob, but I think we have to do it in stages. And if the first stage can be, let's monitor how many people hit the actual website or, or sure. respond to us for the first six months, at least we know we have a whole lot more of those than we did when we prior to doing the, all of this. And then from that, um, I think some of it's going to be subjective in the sense that, well, we did 50 new businesses last year. Now we did 62 new businesses this year. And then we did 78 new businesses the next year, you know, that kind of thing. That, that's kind of a subjective thing. And, and, and I, and I agree with you as time goes on, we may be able to refine it to, to get it, more definitive because that's where the town council and everybody else is going to ask well you're spending all this time and money what are we getting out of this um but i think initially just the fact that wallingford is being looked at more often than it had been prior to this getting started i think is is something valuable right there absolutely totally agree with you mark and and we may find that um even if we don't and i i think it's going to be successful i think we're going to get more um a uh, lot of lot more branding in the marketplace, and I think it's going to be very beneficial to bringing new businesses into town. But we may find ultimately that the biggest benefit is just the interaction and community and the community we build within the town. So, um, but totally agree with you. It's going to take time. It may take several years before we can get to that. Um, I just wanted to tie that in ultimately to try to look at the big picture as well. Yeah, points well made. And and Sam, you and I had conversations uh, quite some time ago about. How do we measure success? And, you know, just from my standpoint, it's a matter of active leads. So, I mean, if I get a call from, you know, a refinery in, in, uh, in Wisconsin that wants to consider and ask about Wallingford, and it never turns into them coming even close to Wallingford, I'd consider that a successful yeah. lead because that's somebody who knows about Wallingford that didn't also know about us before. So, you know, in this business, like in any sales business, you, you, you know, you get a very small percentage of the projects that you work on actually come to fruition and turn the lights on. So in this point, it's a matter of being in the conversation. What we're trying to do is expand the conversation exponentially and, you know, geographically. And, and then, you know, how many active leads? So we, we've got to, you know, we'll measure that. And I measure that, you know, through this office as I do provide on my monthly report each month, so. So I just wanted to add, I think to answer your question, Rob, um, the way that we can make sure our initiatives in social media, media are kind of directly working toward that goal of having more qualified leads contacting the office is to always refer back to a call to action at the end of uh, not necessarily at the end of every post, but at the end of every campaign or series of posts. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for um, the reports. I want to apologize again. We are, <laughs> these meetings always run long, but. Uh, I do have one more thing to add. Um, okay. I just want to uh, clear the messaging. I'm going to start messaging uh, college career centers today. Oh. Uh, I have my finalized message. I want to clear that with everyone, make sure everyone's good. Uh, it's going to be sent to five different colleges. It's going to be um, this subject line and then this messaging. Whatever's highlighted is going to be edited for each school. So the inter school name is very obvious. Handshake is used by about half of the schools I have on my list, so that will be edited out if the school does not use Handshake. Um, but this is going to be sent to uh, Quinnipiac, Sacred Heart, Gateway Community College, uh, Wesleyan, and uh, Albertus Magnus, uh, their general career centers.
Can you move it up a little bit? I read. Yeah, it's just this paragraph uh, that just ends here. Paragraph? Okay. It's just what I have right now. I've highlighted it, but it, it ends with that best. Everything else is bullet points about questions I might expect, just different facts I might want to recall when sending follow-up emails. That looks good to me. Yeah, that's a good good initiative for sure, Brianna. All right. Yeah, so that's going to get sent out. Uh, basically, right after this meeting, I'm going to go send those out. And then uh, the EDC email will be CC'd on them. And then hopefully I will have continuing updates with the work we're doing with those schools. Well done, Brenna. So David, to the, to the point about the, the Google Calendar and so forth, we would start it with, you know, today's date. And we'll backfill it with there's a message that went into the market from this team's initiative. Mm -hmm. right? I am actually right now typing in people's email addresses so I can share it with them. For our um, committee members, Rob, Mark, Patricia, if you guys could send me your email addresses or just type them in the chat so I can make sure I get you guys added to the calendar as okay. well. Okay. Um, and I'm adding all of the team members. So, uh, within a couple of seconds after the meeting ends, I should have the calendar shared to everyone so posts can start being made. Very good. So the calendar we'll use for frequency of messaging, um, messaging and audience development. Those are the three areas that we need to um, utilize this tool for, mm -hmm. right? All right, um, let's see, direction from here. Um, Brenna, I think you and I are good. John and I have got a little bit of work to do, I think. Chandler and I have got a little work to do. Shay, I think um, most of what we need to do is gonna be just merging email lists, right? So um, and I, so uh, we, we can have a brief conversation about that. I think the website, where, where it's website, Callum and, uh, Callum and I are meeting with Lynn tomorrow. Um, all right, so there's a lot to do there. Um, Mr. Chairman, next meeting, what are your thoughts? Sinking two weeks, Monday, which would be the... Um, that's Martin Luther, January 18th. Oh, that's Martin Luther King, yep. How does, you know, we, we uh, when do you go back to class, David? The 25th is the first day of class, although some students will be moving in the week before. I don't know if any of you guys are, but. We also haven't gotten dates for move-in yet, so that is also completely up in the air for us. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure if they had actually sent you guys anything. So They yeah. have not sent us anything. And, you know, we had done this Monday morning at eight o'clock to accommodate um, the team because everybody had classes that started at nine or after and then is this still the best time to meet or for our next meeting anyway? If it's I before know. class. I know Jack has had problems with eight o'clock. Yep. I noticed he's not here today too again. So David, maybe we can just pull the group and see if there's a, a better time for better everybody. Time? Sure. Um, is that okay with you, Mark? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm wide open that week, so just whatever day you're going to do it. You want to get back to us, or do you want to put a date in now, or what do you want to do? Well, I, I would suggest we put a, we get a date in the calendar, and then, you know, David, if we want to tweak it. I mean, for, the, for those uh, students that are on the call, I mean, would you rather do 9 o'clock than 8 o'clock? Would you rather do 10 than 9? Does uh, Wednesday the twentieth work? Is this just for that next meeting, or are we planning what time works best for us during the spring semester? I was going to suggest just for the next meeting. Okay. And we can have. As of right now, any time that week works for me. Team with me. Me too. Yeah, same with me. Too. Samantha, the same for you. Yeah. What date exactly was it again? Twentieth. Uh, Wednesday the twentieth. Um, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in a J term, so I as long as it's before noon, I'm good. So what do we say Wednesday the 20th at 9? 
you would you prefer nine thirty? I mean, Rob, Mark, I'm not sure what your schedules look like. Yeah, uh, what, what I what I'm noticing with the last couple of meetings, it's it's really not fair to the last the final students who are presenting because we're rushing them along. Yeah, and that's just, and that's just not right. Um, so, I would prefer to, like today's meeting should have split up. We should have split it up into two. Mm -hmm. it, there was a lot of content, a lot of hard work put in. Um, so, we just have to be cognizant. I'm fine, uh, whether it's eight o'clock or nine o'clock. I'm fine, but we have to set a time. In other words, we're going to be finished in an hour, or we're going to yeah. be finished in an hour and a half. I, I, I agree, Mark, because I also start my work day, too. So it, it would be wonderful if we could split it up. I, yeah. I've had five people come into my office already with a note saying this or note saying that. And yeah, I had an emergency. Bob yeah. got the same situation and Anthony's in and out and, and all that. So, yeah, um, you know, to me, eight o'clock is better because as, a, as you get into the day more and more, it just gets more complicated, as everyone, I'm sure, realizes. So, uh, and I, I think that we should do no more than an hour and a half. If we can't do it in an hour and a half, then let's just set another date and give that person the chance to make the presentation properly where we can digest it, question it, you know, have the, uh, the verbal that we need to have. Mm -hmm. So that's, I was going to tell you this offline, but I think since everybody's on, we might as well talk about it. And sure. yeah. Makes sense. I, I agree. And eight o'clock works really well for me. Yeah. I, I, I would rather stay with eight. So we at Wednesday the 20th at eight o'clock? Yeah. Thumbs up, everybody, good? Yeah. All right. Just so you know, Tim, I will be, I have another meeting at nine on that day. So, but I'll be there for at least the first hour. That's great. Mark, you want to set a parameter? Do you want to set eight to 9.30? That'd be fine. So that everybody for their schedules can, uh, okay. Tim, is there? We use the same link, or do we? Is it? We'll, no, we'll get send, a new link. It. We'll, we'll get send a new link. It. We'll send okay. another. Okay. All right. Okay. Fair amount of work to be done uh, between now and then between myself and team members, and uh, but hey, um, we're chugging. I think we're we are so close. Great work, great work had by all. I'll tell yeah. you, great work. Yeah, very, very, very impressive for sure. You guys are. And an A plus job for sure. Mark, would it be possible to get your email address so I can add you to I the I put group? it in the chat. I don't know how to use these things. It's just uh, Mark G, M A R K G, at ggbeverage.com. Mark G at ggbeverage.com. Okay. The and invite. Do you want to ask also for sending out justification? Do you also want that sent to Anthony? And if so, what is his email? Oh, yes. It, I didn't hear that. She needs, um, she needs Anthony's um, email address. Yeah. Anthony Bracali? Yes. Yes. I got a second. But, okay. Patricia at Brother James is my, I resent it in the chat. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Mark, for some reason, yours just didn't show up in the chat. I can just see it sitting here, but I have no idea how to send it to you. <laughs> uh, hit enter after you've typed it and make sure it's going to everyone. Yeah, it says everyone. And then I get file and I get a more. Yeah, more. You want to hit more and then chat and more and okay. then type it in. It's on the very bottom, it'll say type message here. Okay. So it says save chat, chat saved. I don't know. I don't know. I'll figure it out someday. I, you know what I'll do? I'll go next door to my daughter's office and ask her how to do it. So. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Much younger than I am. So. I just put Anthony Bercali's email in. Okay. I have just it. Thank you. The calendar as well. So, David, um, I see the link to the calendar in the chat, but is you going to like email it to us or something, or how do we get so it? So, the link that's there, that is to the drive. And so, that's where everyone has been putting ideas and, and justifications and whatnot. So that's the Google Drive is the link there. The calendar, you guys will receive an email invitation. Okay. And so that will take you there. Um, so do I need to do the, go to this drive for any reason? Only if you are interested in seeing the work that all the students have been doing. Um, but they will be posting everything now to the Google Calendar. So it is okay. basically a redundant. Okay, all right, then I'll wait for the email 
with the length of the calendar. Yep. Okay. If for whatever reason anyone doesn't get it, please let me know. It means I mistyped your email address into Google. I, I will, you know, John, I know that, uh, David, you were having issues with emails sending to me bouncing back. Yes. John, that, the same I, issue. Brenda's nodding. Okay. Yeah. I, I think everyone, reply. when we hit reply back to you, mm -hmm. it your system hates QU for some reason. <laughs> and so it's like, no, you are all spam. Um, it, for me, that has now been resolved, but I don't know if anyone else is still having issues. I yeah, I, was, I had an issue yesterday. Sense. Okay. And John, you had that issue. Um, yeah, I had it yesterday. Week, week. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll talk to our IT guy again. I, I thought he cleared out every qu.edu address, but you're all using that, right? Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go through with him again. My apologies. You're on mute, Brenna. Brenna, you're on mute. Some of them might be full out quinnipiac.edu, not just qu.edu. Sometimes they're oh. spelled out. OK. So that could be the issue. Got it. All right. Anything else, Mark? Tim, I think we're set. Very good. All right. Great job, David. I may um, I, I don't know what your day looks like, and I may not get to it today. But I, may, I just want to give you a call, have a sure. side conversation as to just some items we need to take, and, and some individual t individual team members we uh, have some open items with. So. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Great. All right, I can't thank you guys enough. Again, great, great job, great work, committee members. Thank you very much for all your time, and and uh, sorry that we went on so long, but obviously it's. A culmination of a heck of a lot of work these guys are doing. So uh, I think yeah. we're in a good place. And we're on for tonight at 630, right? That's correct. Sounds great. Thank you, everyone. I'll be there. Good stuff, everyone. Right. Great Thank day. You. All right, everybody. Have a great day, everyone. You yeah. too. Bye.